For God's sake, this man cannot remain in power. President Biden may have made up the line about removing Vladimir Putin from power. Well, I make no apologies for it. But his intense assertion about defending every inch of NATO is in the official text. Don't even think about moving on one single inch of NATO territory. What Mr. Biden presumably means is that if Russia's army commits any atrocity on the non-NATO side of various borders, say gassing Ukraine or Sweden, Article 5 remains dormant. But if one Russian tank tread touches Poland or Latvia, it's war. The full force of our collective power. This puts us in long-term danger. Putin is paranoid. In his mind now, it, it makes no sense to negotiate whatsoever because come peace, he will be hunted down. The world has managed to mentally ring fence Ukraine. We have created the pretense that by providing Ukraine with enough military support, we will ensure that Mr. Putin's aggressions stay there and never come here, not one inch into Western Europe or the United States. This is delusional. The Russian dictator and the free world's primary enemies have been here for years. We estimate that uh the world is buying, and mostly Europe, is buying five to seven billion dollars per week of Russian gas and oil. This is a huge amount of revenue to fund Vladimir Putin's war machine. It is unquestionably good that the world's leaders have woken up to the threat and are now rearming and resetting priorities. But before Ukraine happened, the scale of the assault on NATO and other open democracies by Russia, China, North Korea, and Iran was already astounding. The People's Republic of China is the most consequential strategic competitor to the United States. The PRC is executing a dedicated campaign that utilizes all forms of national power. There is no conceivable battlefield on which these four nations haven't attempted subversion, whether targeting our critical infrastructure. The solar wind supply chain compromise should have served as a wake-up call to our adversaries' increasing interest in targeting supply chain vulnerabilities. Or violating UN Security Council resolutions, as North Korea did last week with its launch of an intercontinental ballistic missile. It was an egregious and unprovoked escalation, and it poses a threat to the global proliferation regime. It's crazy for us to allow Iran to move toward a nuclear weapon and also to be testing these missiles, because by perfecting their ballistic missiles, it means once they get the bomb, they're ready to go. Irrespective of these developments, the Biden administration hopes to sign a nuclear weapons agreement with Iran while believing that nothing really bad will happen from not including Iran's ballistic missile program or its national terrorist army. The IRJC is a national army and a national army cannot be listed as terrorist group and certainly it is not acceptable. The free world's four enemies are not doing these things just to annoy or disrupt us. They want to weaken and replace us. Saudi Arabia is now considering pricing some of its oil in China's currency instead of dollars. Hedging may be a way to send a message to Washington that its pro-Iran policy is going to have some consequences. The peace talks in Turkey between Ukraine and Russia raised hope that the war was ending, despite rhetoric like this from Russia before the talks started. I have no doubt that all the objectives of our special and military operation in, uh, in Ukraine will be completed. We have no doubt about that. Alas, with the exception of countries under immediate threat like Poland and Ukraine, the West's leaders have kept their heads buried in the sand. I advise anyone going for negotiations with the Russian Federation not to eat or drink anything, and preferably avoid touching any surface. We routinely get the so-called wake-up calls on security, then we go back to sleep. And yet Ukraine somehow seems different. It's an opportunity to raise our game against adversaries who don't recognize borders or limits. We're talking about helping train the troops in that are the, the Ukrainian troops that are in Poland. That means our leadership has to stay on script. I do not believe that we are in the process of currently training uh, military forces uh, from Ukraine in Poland. The 2024 presidential election cannot come soon enough. <laughs>